I dated a ghost for six months and even after I found out he was a ghost, I was still in love with him and willing to continue the relationship. I know this is hard to believe, but we have ghosts walking around this planet with us. Especially in Nigeria, there are a lot of ghosts. Ghosts that have died and they didn't rest well. Well, let's call him Ebuka. Ebuka used to live in a very lonely street and that was the street to my lesson. So every time I'm passing that street, you would you would either find nobody or just one person walking across that same road. So I always see Ebuka around. And at the time, I used to go for that. Um, it was my jam lesson that period. So I used to go for that jam lesson around six and come back around four. Within that period, that's when I'll always see Ebuka. Ebuka will be the first to say hi to me. Ebuka will be the last to say bye to me when I'm going back home. And you know, that continued for a long time. Until eventually, Ibuka told me he liked me. So, I mean, what was next? He started the relationship. To be honest, there were a lot of things about him that suggested that he was a ghost. But I wasn't even thinking in that direction. And again, my church, we don't believe in ghosts. We believe that once somebody dies, that's the end, nothing else. After my jam lesson sometimes, I would go to Ibuka's house. Ibuka did not have a single picture in his house. Ebuka never used to talk about any family or any friends. In fact, if me and Ebuka were walking on the road, I was the only one people were talking to. And sometimes I'm like, what is happening? Are these people blind? You know how girls will see you as another lady with a man and later they come and gist you that, hey, what did they do? And that was like the age I was in. I was still in secondary school. Sometimes me and Ebuka would be on the road walking and I would see some of my classmates None of them will look me in a suspicious manner. Nobody will come and say, precious, what do they do with man? I used to even fear, let my parents not see me with a man. He would always tell me, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Nothing is happening, nothing is happening. Ebuka looked like someone in his early, um, early 30s then. I know, sounds like child abuse. But he looked like someone in his early 30s then. Ebuka never kissed me for one day. Ebuka never hugged me for one day. He would tell me that he does not want to take advantage of me, that he's waiting for me to clock um 18 because i was around 17 and few months then he never did any of that with me because he said he was waiting for me to clock 18. i never knew that he had reasons why he wasn't doing this ebuka did not use to snap any picture with me and it's not like i had like a big phone i was using a nokia c3 that was like the phone raining that time and my elder sister got it for me so you know how with the small tiny screen i'd, I'd be excited to want to take pictures with my boyfriend you know ebuka was nothing that he wasn't even of that life. Whenever I bring the phone, I, ah, guy, let's take pictures. He'll run away. Do you understand? Ibuka was older. Ibuka did not used to go to work. Ibuka was very, like, when you enter Ibuka's house, it will be giving mortuary vibe, not standard. Very quiet. He didn't have a lot of things. Guys, I think I'm getting scared. He'll be making statements like, I came to this earth for a mission. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I will soon go back. I say, you soon go back. Go back way. Go back way. Strange, strange statements. I will soon go back. Um, My work will soon be done. Things like that. I'm like, what do you mean by your work will soon be done? Luca was very, very mysterious. One very good afternoon, I was in front of Ebuka's house on my way to the jam lesson. And guess who I saw coming back from work? My mother. I saw my mom approaching. I could not even hide. Like, this was my mom. This was me. Immediately. I said, good afternoon, ma. I just knew I was going to. My mom was like, what are you doing here? I said, I'm going to jam lesson. Then why are you standing at the spot? Because I was talking to Ebuka in front of his house on that lonely road. I said, hey, I'm going now. I'm going now. She said, okay. So I'm like, okay, this is weird. My mom did not shout at me. I'm like, okay, maybe when I get home, I was already prepared for what will happen. She's going to tell my dad. He was going to So I could not concentrate all through that lesson. When I got home, my mom did not say anything. I even had to now meet her. Mommy, hope you're not angry. Oh, I can explain. No, oh, it's just my friend. I was not, I was sounding like somebody that was. My mom was like, what are you talking about? I said, yes, now when you saw me on the road with that uh, brother that was talking to, he's just my friend, though, not, you know, this one, you're not talking about it, though. Hope you don't have it at the back. I was like, I did not see you with anybody. Guys, I kid you not. I was standing and having a conversation with Ebuka. I 
started asking my mom, oh, you see me, you didn't see me. You didn't see because it was even a different case. If there was a shade covering him, we were in the middle of the road. We were talking, close proximity. You know that compromising position that you... My mom said she did not see me. I told my mom that this, my friend that lives there, I started telling her everything because I was scared. My mom was like, let us go to his house. I said, mommy, please, I'm not telling you so that we'll go to the house. I was fidgeting. Guys, I was shaking. My mom said, wear your clothes. Let us go now. Guys, that is how my mom followed me. When we got to Ibuka's house, there was a big padlock in front of the house. Guys, like I was saying, we saw a big padlock in front of Ibuka's house. I was like, okay, mommy, maybe he's not around. We'll come back. My mother said, no. We will call neighbors. I did not see you talking to anybody. So it's either you are or there is something wrong. And it is not my child that will be possessed. And it was like a long street of um, long. Uh, you know how they build one one room, self self call long like that. That was how that house was. So my mom started knocking on neighbors' door. She started knocking. Almost all the neighbors were not around, but there was one that was around. He now came out, and my mom was like, "Do they know Ebuka?" That is here. My mom was angry for two things. Aside that she didn't see us together, she was like, why would a grown-up man be talking to a teenager? 17 years, I was still a teenager at that time. Why? So she wanted to rain on him. He was like, there's nobody living in that particular house. That, that one is empty. My mom said no. Somebody is living here that they cannot even cover up. This one cannot cover up. They must open the door now. He was like, no. Now the person living there died about six months ago. And he inside the house. And they've not been able to rent the house to anybody. Guys, I started peeing on myself. I cannot make this up. I urinated on my body. I said no. I told the man that no, that I used to come to this house at least twice a week when I'm coming back from my jam blessing. I will come, I will say hello to him. He said, the person living there, the name was not even Ibeka. The person's name was Stephen. And Stephen was six months ago. I was numb. I could not see. A word anymore it was you know how it happens in the movies that was what was happening there yeah. finally we got permission they were able to break the door they broke the door and it was an empty room empty empty no bed no mattress Nothing was inside that house. Nothing. I'm even having chills as I'm saying this story. Because this is an experience that I would never forget. 